A box plot is a way of looking at an entire distribution at once. Any time that I'm working with a quantitative variable, I make two charts. A box plot, which we'll talk about here, and a histogram, which we'll talk about in the next section. Box plots are especially useful to check for outliers and to check symmetry. Box plots get their name from the box in the middle of the chart. That box shows the scores that mark off the middle 50% of the distribution by starting at the 25th percentile score or first quartile of the distribution and stopping at the 75th percentile score or third quartile. The line in the middle of the box is the median or the value that splits the distribution into two equal sized groups of people. The lines on the left and right of the box go out to the lowest and highest non-outlying scores, while the circles are used to show outliers. Outliers, which are unusually high or low scores, play an important role in data analysis because they can dramatically distort many common statistics. While there are many ways to determine if a score is an outlier, one of the most common and effective ways is based on the size of the box in the middle of a box plot. This is easiest to see with an annotated box plot. This figure shows the anatomy or components of a box plot. The box plot is shown with no fill, and I've overlaid a dot plot of the data that's been jittered or slightly scattered so points don't lay on top of each other. At the far left of the chart is a small vertical line, also called a fence, that marks the lowest non-outlying scores in the distribution. In this particular case, there aren't any low outliers, so this fence also marks the minimum score, which can be called the zeroth percentile, or Q0 for quartile zero, or the beginning of the first quarter of scores. Next, a horizontal line, sometimes called a whisker, and in this case it's a dotted line, connects the lower fence to the box in the middle. The box is the important part because it marks the range for the middle 50% of scores. The left edge of the box marks the score for quartile one, or the top of the first quarter of scores. This is also called the 25th percentile score. Moving to the right, the thick vertical line in the middle is the median, which marks the score for quartile two. This is also known as the median 50th percentile score. People sometimes just call it the middle score, but it's important to remember that it's not the same thing as the mean or average unless the distribution is perfectly symmetrical. The median and all of the quartiles are based on ordering, not summing, so they behave differently than the mean. At the right end of the box is a vertical line that marks the score for quartile three or the top of the third quarter of scores. This is also called the 75th percentile. The difference between quartile three and quartile one, that is the width of the box, is called the interquartile range or just the IQR. The meaning of this should be clear. It's the range or the difference between the middle quartiles or intermediate quartiles. To the right of the box is another horizontal line or whisker which connects to another fence this time marking the highest non-outlying scores. In this case, however, there are outliers on the high end, and these are marked separately with circles. The red dots are there to show the original data, and again, they're jittered so they don't stack on top of things. That's why the middle one is higher than the outlier circle. Two additional notes are relevant here. The first is that the size of the interquartile range is the core of the method for determining outliers. To do this, the IQR is multiplied by 1.5, which makes it 50% larger, and any data points that are further away from the box than that are considered outliers. This isn't the only way to identify outliers, but it's common, easy, and unaffected by the outliers themselves. Second, I like to draw box plots horizontally, because that puts the scale in the same orientation as the scale on histogram, which makes it easier to compare the two. On the other hand, you can also draw box plots vertically, and that's the default for many programs. Just use whatever you think is most helpful. As a final note on box plots, they're also good because they're compact and you can put several right next to each other, which lets you compare the several different groups on the same variable. You can also compare the distributions of several different variables as long as they're on the same scale. For example, this chart shows box plots for five random variables, each consisting of 200 values from the normal distribution. It's easy to see that the distributions are closely related, but it's also easy to see that there are some deviations at the extremes of the distributions. While the data is random in this case, and therefore without any real meaning, this chart highlights an important application in which box plots work better than nearly anything else.